Hello everybody and welcome to Flock Talk. Now if you are looking into getting a new bird, you have probably received the advice of either don't get one or do your research. And while both of those are well-intentioned statements, they don't exactly do much to actually help you figure out whether or not a bird is the correct fit for your home or what things you even need to research. It's hard to know what questions to ask the internet if you don't even know what you don't know. So for this video, what I'm gonna do is basically just rattle off a bunch of completely random facts about what it's like owning birds, the sorts of things you might not know about owning birds. Very, very briefly, I'm only gonna do like one sentence per thing, just so that way you have a very broad list here of various subjects and topics and things that you then can go and research yourself independently. You can take the subjects that I've talked about or the opinions and the suggestions that I make throughout this video and you can dig deeper into those topics to figure out whether or not bird ownership will be too much for you, figure out what species will work best for your house, and also know what topics to research into so you know how to take the best possible care of whatever bird you do or do not decide to bring into your home. So again to clarify, I'm not going to be going super in depth into these topics here today. I'm just going to be very briefly bringing them up, giving a quick idea of what that concept is about, and then leaving it to you to do more thorough research so now you know what on earth to actually look into so you can take proper care of a bird if you do decide to get one. First of all, find an avian vet in your area. A lot of places do not have one, and if you can't get proper medical care for your bird, it might not be the best decision to get one. You can find an avian vet in your area by using aav.org slash search and you can find one in your area. Exotic vets might treat birds, but they do not have the proper background to treat them properly, and regular dog and cat veterinarians usually will not take bird patients or will be inadequate in their care. Perches, birds cannot use nothing but those straight dowel perches that come free in the cages. They do need a variety of textures and surfaces, things like natural branches, things with bark, without bark, they need variety in order to keep their feet healthy. Most captive pet parrots do not do well on a seed-only diet. There are some people that can do it successfully with very close supervision of their veterinary team, but the most recommended method for feeding parrots currently is to use a fortified pellet diet, and it is best to work with your veterinarian to figure out what is best for your bird. No pellet can actually consider itself to be 100% nutritionally complete. Science actually has no idea how much of each nutrient a parrot needs, so every single bird that you feed in your house is probably going to benefit from a slightly different diet. There is no one food that is better than the rest, no matter what the internet says is the current best running pellet. Parrots do not eat nothing but seeds and grains alone. Their diet is about 50% fruits and vegetables, with vegetables being the main priority. In order to get the most variety, you usually need to give them around two to three different greens, one to two different yellows and oranges, one to two different types of reds and purples. The best way to feed this variety is by making a chop, which is basically cutting up a bunch of produce, sticking it in your freezer, and then just thawing out a portion by the day so you are not wasting an excessive amount of produce. Parrots require an excessive amount of mental enrichment. They are super, super, super smart. They also need to be constantly chewing on toys in order to keep their beaks down. They do constantly grow just like your fingernails, and if they are not chewing, the beaks will overgrow. It is very common for a new bird to seem uninterested in their toys. This is usually just due to stress or because they perhaps were not provided with adequate toys when they were younger. There are a bunch of different classifications of toy types, and every bird will have their preferences. You have your hardwoods, your softwoods, things that make crunchy sounds, your foraging toys, things that make noises. One thing I will say is to absolutely please avoid toys that are reflective or use an excessive amount of bells, as they can be hormonal stimulants, as well as very stressful for your bird. With that, it is important to incorporate foraging as much as possible. Parrots forage for their food primarily, so it is a critical part of their necessary requirements. Foraging is simply hiding food and having the birds search and find it out. Cleaning their enclosures is exceptionally important. It's important to get a cage that has bars on the bottom so they do not go down to the ground to forage down there and eat some infected food that has bacteria in it. With that though, cage cleaning does not have to be a big stressful thing. Just because it is common to have one day a week that you do a big deep clean 
doesn't mean that's the only way to clean a cage. You can absolutely break it down and clean the bottom of the cage one day and the bars another. As long as it is all getting cleaned regularly, it is not a big deal if you choose to break it apart so it fits better for your mental health and for your schedule. Most chain pet stores products for birds just outright suck or are exceptionally overpriced. You are probably going to have to go through online retailers or if you get lucky, you might happen to find a bird specific store in your location. Another place to keep in mind and check out is actually aquarium supply stores. Stores like that usually sell exotic animal supplies and you may get lucky and find that they have a much better bird section than they will in your chain pet stores. Just because something is trending or popular or a lot of people seem to say that it's great doesn't actually mean that it's good for your bird. You have to do what's best for your individual. They are all very drastically different creatures and what works for one bird will probably not work for another. Although there are a lot of tricks a bird can learn and it might be a primary reason for you to want to get one, tricks and flashy behaviors are not the most important thing. Forming a strong relationship and with trust with your bird is the most important part of parrot ownership, taking the time to properly bond with them. Your bird could never be tamed and never learn to step up and you could still have a really long lasting healthy relationship with them built on a lot of trust. It doesn't make them any less valuable and it is very possible that you get a bird that doesn't want the level of interaction in your relationship as you want with them. Grit is a commonly sold product. It is basically small minerals of sand that a bird will consume that is supposed to break down food in their gizzard, which is the final form of their digestion. Parrots do not need grit. It can cause lacerations and internal bleeding as well as infections. There are perch covers and floor cage covers that are made out of what looks like sandpaper. These are marketed as keeping their beaks or their talons trimmed. These are not healthy for them. They will either eat those bits of sand, which will cause the same problem that I discussed with the grit, or they will actually get particles trapped inside their feet and can cause them a lot of pain and discomfort. Mineral blocks and over-the-counter supplements are usually quite unhealthy. They are unregulated, they can cause overdoses, or just outright be made of things that aren't good for your bird. Unless you have been advised by a vet, they generally do not need mineral supplements. The only one that is usually recommended to feed is a cuddle bone, but it is important to remember that cuddle bone does not produce nearly as much calcium that is absorbed as people often think. So it isn't the sole source of calcium that your bird should be getting. Toys do need to be regularly inspected. They're going to get chewed, they're gonna get damaged. This can cause strings and broken bits that your birds can get caught up in, as well as any metal toys can easily become rusted through regular play. Just because you find something in the bird section of a store does not mean that it is safe for birds. There have been toys that have been infected with zinc. There are mineral supplements that cause overdoses. There are all sorts of toys that are not safe for birds that are currently out on the market. Please make sure that before you buy anything new for your bird that you do research into that individual toy part or the things that it is made of or the company that has produced it to determine whether or not it is actually going to be safe for them. Along with that, over-the-counter treatments such as your baths and your mite repellents and all of those things are usually quite dangerous and should not be used unless you have been prescribed by a vet to do so. If you do get a new bird, it is very normal for them to refuse new foods for months and months and months, maybe even even years. This is because they are prey animals and if they were not taught that something was edible by their parents at a young age, they are likely to assume that it is toxic. Birds also see the UV color spectrum and will often refuse foods because the UV light is not there so it doesn't actually look ripe to them. It is important that you do not just assume that they do not like that food. You need to be persistent with it, offer it regularly, offer it in different textures and colors and sizes and shapes and temperatures in every possible way that you can come up with a variation to feed that food, you need to try that because they will end up liking it eventually. They're just going to be very picky and persistent until they realize that it is not going to hurt them. It is also normal for a bird to be afraid of a new cage and layout, meaning that they will not play with new toys right away. It might seem like you spent a lot of money and now they don't like that toy give them some time to get used to it, they will come around. You can also incorporate foraging in order to encourage them to try out new toys. The more that you add new toys into that environment, the more that you change the environment around and just move toy locations, the easier it's gonna get for them to adapt to those changes and be more accepting of new toys in the future. Parrots do require UV light. Light through your window will not suffice. It filters out 90% of UV rays. They either need a bird specific, not a reptile bulb, or you need access year round to be able to have them outdoors in a carrier or a harness or an outdoor aviary 
so they can get that UV light. Without it, they cannot properly absorb calcium. It is important to have a source of UV light indoors because they do see the UV color spectrum and it will greatly impact their mood, feather plucking, how much they play with toys, and whether or not they eat their vegetables. You may have seen videos of online of birds flying freely outdoors. This is called free flight. It is extremely dangerous and is something that you should not teach through videos or recommendations online. If this is a reason for you getting a bird, it is important to recognize that this is not a skill that all birds can learn, and this is a skill that should only be taught under the supervision of a qualified professional that specializes in free-flying parrots. This is not as easy as teaching a dog to recall. These are prey animals with very distinctly different responses. It is very, very tricky to teach. It is not for everyone, and even with proper training, it is not without major risks. If you are looking into finding a trainer for your bird, it is important to remember that the training industry is not regulated. Years of experience and training a lot of birds does not actually mean that they know what they're doing. You can train a lot of birds and still be doing it incorrectly for years. The best way to find someone that's actually going to be able to help you and not risk damaging the health of your bird is to find someone who has been certified by a certification council. For parrots, the most common one is the International Association of Avian Trainers and Educators. But many parrot trainers may also be certified through dog training programs as well, such as the CPDT, Certified Professional Dog Trainer, usually Knowledge Assessed or Knowledge and Skills Assessed, as all of the transferable skills from force feed dog training do come over into other animal behavior. Other helpful credentials to look out for might be things like their schooling, if they specialize in animal sciences, or have a behavioral background. Although parrots are often seen as highly social animals, in a captive environment, it is not safe to have multiple birds housed in the same small enclosure. They cannot escape each other, they cannot leave, they are left with the only choice but to fight. Even birds that have been bonded or even mated for years will suddenly turn out and lash on each other. It does not matter how well you think they get along, it is extremely risky to house two birds alone in the same enclosure unless it is a massive aviary with regulated behavioral protocols. Budgies and conures and cockatiels and lovebirds and parrotlets are all parrots. They are the same family as macaws. They are still exotic birds. They have the same mental enrichment needs. They are just on a smaller scale. This means they make as much mess. They scream as loud. They are still destructive. They are still parrots and they do need to be treated as such. When it comes to looking into actually getting a new bird, adoption is actually the better choice for you. Unlike with dogs and cats where it might be more beneficial to start with a baby and teach them as they grow older, parrots will experience what's known as the terrible twos, where once they hit two years of age, this baby bird will flip into getting all of its adult hormones and it will no longer be the same bird that you had when it was younger. This bird can become quite aggressive, they can flip-flop all over the place, their behaviors will be harder to read, they will no longer tolerate being manhandled and pushed around, they will act like an adult, independent animal, and that can be a very tricky situation for new bird owners to handle. Instead, if you look at adopting an older bird, they already have established boundaries, their body language is clearly set, they already have known and understood communication skills that you don't have to teach them, their behavioral concerns will already have come out, and you can be aware of them and make the exact right choice of what bird is going to fit into your home, as opposed to what this bird could potentially become when they hit two years and suddenly not fit into your lifestyle anymore. When you are looking up the basics of how to care for different species of birds, you will find the recommended cage sizing. This is the minimum cage requirements that is usually decided based on what the bird can just sleep in. These are not cages that are intended to hold them for eight to 10 hours a day. If you are going to be planning on going to work or school and your bird needs to be caged for those periods of time, it is important to get the biggest possible cage size that you can afford. They will use every ounce of that space provided it is set up sufficiently and they will benefit from the exercise and the enrichment that they can access with that added space. Parrots are relatively new to being kept in captive living. This means that their research is constantly ongoing and the information we had 10 years ago is not the same as the information we have today. A part of parrot keeping is constantly updating your knowledge, constantly double checking the information that you know, and ensuring that you are up to date on what is currently most accurate based on actual scientific studies and research. 
training treats. The easiest way to figure out what's going to work for your bird is to present them with a dish with a bunch of different seeds and see which ones they pick out. Ideally, you want to provide them with things that are low in fat so you can do a lot of training repetitions without them putting on excess weight. This might be things like oat groats or millet or sesame seeds and flax. And then if you need a high value treat for more complex behaviors or to pay them really, really well, that's when you can bring in the occasional fattier seed like a walnut or a sunflower seed. There are a ton of tricks to teach your bird and a lot of flashy things you are probably interested in. It is important to start with very simple behaviors first, even if it is something that you don't think you're personally going to use very much, not so much because they need the skills to learn things later, but because they need to be taught how to learn. Target training is the easiest one to start with. From there, I usually go to things like spin or wave or shake. Do not randomly breed your pet birds. It's very common for people to think that they need to provide nesting material and that they need to allow them to have clutches of eggs. This is super, super dangerous for a variety of reasons. You don't know the genetic history of your birds. You could be breeding a brother and a sister together. You could be breeding cousins together. Breeding birds is significantly more complicated than a lot of people think, and you might not have the necessary skills and knowledge to be able to handle potential babies when they come out or complications with egg laying. A parent is supposed to molt two times per year, usually once around winter and once around spring, but it will feel like they molt all year round, and when those big molts happen, it will feel like your bird has exploded. Feathers will be absolutely everywhere, and you will start a collection of them in a jar simply because you don't want to get rid of them because they're very pretty feathers. Learn as much about bird body language as you can. Body language does differ from species to species, and it does differ on an individual level. The better you can understand your bird's body language, the better you will be able to respect their boundaries, and the faster you will be able to build trust with them and communicate clearly. Do not go along with things simply because they have just been done before. If you bought your bird and its wings were clipped, Google wing clipping and learn whether or not it is something you feel is ethical and safe to be doing with your individual bird. Don't just do it because it was already done. Parrots have exceptionally sensitive lungs. This means that any airborne contaminant can kill them very quickly. Contaminants will be in things that you never thought would have a contaminant before. Teflon is the number one killer for parrots as far as airborne pathogens go. Teflon is present in most nonstick cookware, in your coffee makers. It used to be present in microwavable popcorn bags. You do need to end up revamping most of your household to be able to ensure that your house is safe for birds. Your household cleaners, your scented products, your candles, all of those things can no longer be used once you have a bird in your home. This might impact your personal activities if you are someone who really enjoys scents or if you are someone who enjoys painting. A lot of those fumes can be toxic for birds and it's important to ensure that having a bird and the modifications you will need to make in order to keep them safe isn't going to withdraw from the activities that you already enjoy. Yes, you will have to rearrange most of your life in order to be able to care for a bird sufficiently. You will have to invest in expensive air purifiers. You will have to rearrange your routines so that way you can be home for them as much as possible. They are exceptionally social demanding animals and they will suffer if they get left alone for days on end just because you didn't have the time for them or wanted to be social with your friends today. If you are someone who likes to go out a lot, a parrot might not be suitable for your existing routines. And this isn't just a principle of saying that they're going to be a little sad and upset because they could be alone. This is a very mentally distressing thing for a parrot. You can establish separation anxiety problems where you will then have attention screaming disorders that are going to be ear shattering and can get you kicked out of your apartments real quick. You can end up with a bird that will self mutilate and rip their feathers out, which is quite literally psychologically the same forms of self harm that can become a vicious never ending cycle for some birds. This is a very serious problem and is unfortunately a major reason why a lot of birds end up rehomed because people just don't have as much time for them as they do really need. You are absolutely going to end up getting bit at some point. This is not something to take personally and be offended by. This is how parrots communicate as a last ditch effort to tell you to stop what you're doing. That's gonna be where that is until you hit a point where you really won't get bit by them anymore because you understand those body language cues sufficiently. It's not something you'll end up having to live with forever, but it will be something that you have to work through, especially if you get a younger bird that hasn't learned those communication skills yet. Not all birds like scritches, not all birds like being cuddled, not all birds will talk, and not all birds will dance. If you you're getting a bird exclusively for those reasons, it's important to remember that there's a very real chance that 
that your bird will not do those things. Even if a species is very well known for doing that thing, it's very likely that you will get the individual that doesn't like doing that activity and you need to be prepared for that possibility. Not all birds will work with every household and every individual. Some birds will not get along with your personality. You will have birds that behave in ways that don't mesh well with you. It is really important to not only research each individual species and learn as much as you can about them, but to also talk to people who live with these birds already. They can give you a much more realistic idea of what it's like on a day-to-day -day basis, how their behaviors impact their lives, and whether or not that would mesh well with the way you would like to be living. And yes, parrots are all different species. They are not different breeds. And then when you have a specific species and there are different colors of that same species, those are called different color mutations. They are also not domesticated. This means that they have not been bred for a purpose with people and that they are still very much the same as their wild counterparts. They will behave like a wild bird. They will scream like a wild bird. They will bite like a wild bird. They will be a very big handful. They are not here to please you. They have no desire to make you happy on a default basis. They are their own individual creatures, they are exotic animals, and as such, they require very specific handling and very careful management. When it comes to training birds, you will not get very far using force and punishment. As I said, they are exotic animals. They don't work here to please you. They are not domesticated. The best methods that work for them will be force-free strategies. This means utilizing positive reinforcement or least intrusive, minimally aversive protocols. A lot of parrot species are ground foragers. This means they will fly to the floor and eat every little crumb that they can find. This means you do need to keep your house exceptionally clean so that way they do not end up eating something that is toxic for them and provide outlets for them to exhibit this behavior through using things like snuffle mats and foraging trays or having a room where it is safe for them to be able to go on the floor and forage so they can get that behavior out of their system, have fun, do what they need to, and not be tempted to do it in other areas of the house. They are also flock animals. This means that whatever activity you are doing, they are going to want to be involved in. For the most part, every bird is an individual. This means that they will try and snatch the food out of your mouth while you are trying to eat it. They will scramble up and down your plate trying to take your snacks. They will punch holes in your homework, take the keys off your keyboard, and they will steal your pencil and run away as fast as they can because it's fun and they are flock animals and that is how they play and engage with their environment. Yes, parrots can be potty trained. However, it is actually quite dangerous. It can lead to lots of prolapses. It can lead to infections if the training is not done very precisely. It is not something I often recommend. Parrot poop is not a big deal. It can be cleaned up very easily. And the longer that you live with them, the easier it is for you to actually just time it and know, hey, they haven't pooped in a while and just move them over to an area where it is acceptable for them to be pooping in your house. Feather plucking is a very common ailment for parrots. This is when a bird will rip the feathers out of their body when they don't need to come out and self-mutilate. This is not always a sign of poor care, and as more research comes out, it is suggesting that this might actually be the result of captive breeding and the way that they get taken from their parents too early and miss out on their parent preening, which would create a regulatory signal telling them when to stop. This means that when you get a bird, even if they are seemingly healthy, they could easily develop a plucking syndrome down the line, and it may or may not be fixable depending on the root of the cause. This means that if you are getting a bird purely because it looks pretty and has elegant fluffy feathers, you need to be prepared for the chance that you might end up with a bird that rips all of its feathers out and ends up looking like a plucked stuffed turkey. With that, you might have stumbled across the information that if your bird has brown discolored feathers on their back, it's just from the oils on your hands or because they roll around a lot. And while these things can damage feathers over time, a healthy feather, even with excessive handling, should still remain its main vibrant color. It should be glossy and it should be strong, not tattered and broken. If they are tattered, we may need to reevaluate their diet or you may want to consult a vet. I will add one little caveat to that and that is that when baby birds grow their first set of adult feathers, it is usually very common for those to end up developing brown discoloration over time. And this is simply because the amount of feathers that they grow at once is really hard on the body as well as experiencing life for the first time is exceptionally stressful. And this also has to do with the fact that we don't know what a parrot diet is supposed to look like. So when they've been on one hand feeding formula for their entire babyhood, it's very likely that they are missing out on nutrients that would help those feathers 
stay strong and healthy the, the way that they are supposed to. Make sure to read the ingredients on your pellet bag. Do not just grab one because the cover looks pretty or because the reviews on it are decent. Read the ingredients. You are looking for wholesome grains like barley and rye or millet within the first few ingredients. Things like corn and soy, as well as added sugars and colors, are all fillers and things that are just there to make it palatable so that way the product will sell. Birds can have allergies to foods, dust, and pollens, although it is not exceptionally common. So this is something to keep an eye out for if you see your birds sneezing a lot after consuming a food. Any bird will be a challenge and be difficult. They will all have unique differences. For example, budgies are often referred to as starter birds because their lifespans are shorter and they are smaller and usually a little bit more lenient towards people's mistakes with their body language. However, budgies also chatter a lot. And for me personally, I don't like a bird that chatters constantly, so they don't fit well into my lifestyle. It is very important that you research each individual species and the characteristics that make them different from one another. So that way you understand whether or not that bird is actually going to be good for you as an individual. For some people, this means that their first bird is actually going to be a macaw. That's a bird that works best for them, that they've handled and got some experience with and learned that they love handling and working with and love everything about them, even the parts that make them less desirable pets. This means that some people like me could see a budgie and go, oh, you know, that's not the bird that's going to work best for my household and end up with a bird that might not be seen as a typical starter bird. It is far more important that you get one that's going to work best for you rather than what someone else says is most likely going to be easy. Birds have exceptionally long lifespans. Your smaller birds can usually live for 15 to 30 years and your larger birds can usually live for their 70s up into their hundreds in some cases. You do usually need to have them in your will and you do usually need to have a long-term plan. If you were in high school right now, will you still be able to house them for the next 10, 20 years? Will you have stable housing for them? Will you be able to afford their vet care? Will you be moving into an apartment that accepts them? You need to make sure that you are there for them for those entire 15 to 100 years, depending on the type of bird that you get. Building trust is the single most important thing you can do with your bird, but it takes time. This is not something that you can rush. This is not something you can push to go faster. This is something that does have to move at the bird's pace. Do not feel pressured to make progress just because you see other people doing things quicker. Yes, they are loud. They do scream. It will hurt. You will lose hearing in your ears. It will be painful some days. They will scream when they are happy. They will scream when they are upset. They will scream when they are distressed. You will end up learning to love their happy, excited bird screams and even egg them on to do it more. A noisy bird is usually a happy bird. The only bird I would say is usually quiet enough, even at its loudest, to live in an apartment setting is a parrotlet. However, they can be very touchy with their body language, so they might not be best for some beginners. It just depends on the individual. A sick bird will hide its illnesses until the last possible moment. This means that if you see symptoms, they need to go to the vet right away because they could end up dead the next morning. You need to be weighing them regularly to ensure that you are catching an illness before it begins to show. They are prey animals they will hide it until it is gone too far. Make yourself a bird first aid kit and read up on common emergencies such as choking or seizures or breaking a blood feather or if you cut their nails and trim their quick. Read up on how to evacuate in case of a fire or an earthquake and practice those routines. It is very common for parrots to develop what is known as one person aggression. This is where they will bond really strongly to one person and become aggressive to anyone else around them. This is not usually actually a permanent problem, although it is a very common one. And it is something that can be trained and worked with, but everybody in the household does need to be able to cooperate and get along in order to establish a proper training plan to resolve those problems. If you opt not to work on it, it is very common for those behaviors to escalate and end up with a bird that will fly across the room to attack another person because they have bonded with one person a little too tightly and have now viewed them as their mate, which can create a very unhealthy relationship where the bird will cause serious harm to anyone else in the home and be very hormonally unstable, which can lead to all sorts of health problems. Hormonal instability is one of the biggest causes for most behavioral problems in birds. This means that you need to be very careful on how you regulate their day-to-day -day lives so that way you do not trigger those hormone strikes. You don't touch them below the head and neck area. All of that is reserved for mate behaviors. You want to make sure that you are not providing dark nesting spaces, those huts, those caves, any nesting materials, that you are making sure that their diet is not 
excessively high in fat and protein, and that their daylight hours are maintained at a stable, regular rate that usually simulates the winter hours for wherever that bird is originally from. You do not need an entire bird room and the most flashy, expensive toys and the biggest name brand things in order to take proper care of your bird. Absolutely do not discredit the value of a good DIY. In my room here, just about everything in this room has been DIY'd at one point or another, and it can save you a lot of money, can teach you a lot of great skills, and be able to provide them with excellent enrichment without having to spend a ton of money. Along with that, when your bird shreds and destroys a toy, break it apart and save any of the parts that are still somewhat usable. A bird is not gonna care if the toy looks brand new, but you can save those parts and make a new toy out of it to make the longevity of your toy a little bit longer, make the bird feel excited to have a new toy, well, reusing and saving money. If you can, buy toy parts instead of pre-made full toys. This will require a little bit of labor on your part, but it will save you a ton of money and makes it way easier to provide enrichment that's gonna work for your specific bird. As I have said, birds are super, super picky, and often when you buy a pre-made toy, there's a bunch of toy parts in that thing that they just will never be interested in for that specific individual. So when you buy toy parts, you can buy the things that your bird actually does like, have a nice stock up at a discounted price, and be able to make a ton of toys for them out of just the things that they're actually going to use. There are actually a ton of online retailers for parrot supplies, and I'll get anyone who's made it this far to leave their favorites down in the comments below. But my two favorites are Feathered Addictions, which is a Canadian store, and then My Safe Bird Store, which is located in the US. But both of those stores sell bulk toy parts as well as their own uh, really well made toys and various play sets, as well as having worldwide shipping. When it comes to chain stores, the two best brands you can usually find in there are Planet Pleasures and Bird Kebabs. Usually you're not going to find much else out there that is really good for them that your bird's super going to enjoy. Every now and then you'll get lucky, but those two are the main ones that you'll find that are actually good for birds and most birds do enjoy. Websites that you can start from that are reliable and run by people that are actually qualified in parent behavior and care. We have Beauty of Birds, avianenrichment.com, Good Bird Inc., the International Association of Avian Trainers and Educators, and learningparrots.com. All of those websites are either written by behaviorists or veterinarians or someone else that is qualified to be giving advice on parrot education. I would absolutely start with those resources, see what information you can find, and then learn from there. There are a lot of other websites that are not run by qualified professionals that do still have good quality information in them. I just like to provide these so that we have a good base and a reference to fall back on and know, hey, these people give good information. I found this bit of information on a different website. Let me cross-reference it over here with these people and see if they're on the same page so that way you are better able to avoid misinformation. Human saliva is dangerous for parrots, as is dog and cat saliva. It is the gram-negative bacteria that is present in our microbiome that is not present in theirs. They can handle very, very small amounts of it, but usually not a lot. This means you don't want to share your food with them where you have just bitten. You don't want to share your cup of water with them. You don't want to let them preen around your mouth too much. You don't want to kiss them on the beak excessively. Every now and then, of course, is fine. This also also means that if you have cats and dogs, it is incredibly important to keep them separated. Build a solid routine. Birds are creatures of habit and they thrive on a routine. The faster you will get to a routine is not only beneficial for the sake of your bird, but it's also really helpful for you when you get into an established routine on when to rotate their toys and clean their enclosures and ensure that you're meeting all their enrichment needs. It makes it a lot easier for you to manage all of those aspects of owning a bird while not getting too overwhelmed. That being said, it is also important to have some element of randomness in there because if you have a super stable routine that never changes and then you have to go on holiday or you have a drastic situation happen where now your routine has to change, that can end up causing a sudden burst of feather blocking because it is now a sudden change that your bird wasn't prepared for. So although routine is important, I would make the time to have the occasional different day, mix things up just a little bit, so that way they can learn to adapt to those changes when those emergency situations happen. Training sessions do not have to be long in order to be productive. An average training session can be around five to 15 minutes. That's usually the length of a parrot's 
attention span with five minutes being when they are new to training and 15 being when they are well rehearsed at it. However, your training session could be one minute long and you would still see a lot of progress as long as you are training somewhat consistently, just once a day or once every other day, and you will still be able to achieve a lot of great things with your training. It doesn't have to take up a huge block of your day. Last thing I'll take in here is that when you do get a new bird, it is really common to feel like they are not eating for like the first week that you bring them home. I assure you that they are. It's just that birds are prey animals. They don't know you. They are stressed out. So they will not eat when you are in the room because they don't feel safe having their head in a bowl where they can't see you. In order to check and see if your bird is eating, if they are on seeds, you can take a look at the dish and look for those empty seed shells. You can lightly blow on it and all of the empty shells should lift up out of the dish. If you're seeing a lot of empty shells, that means that they are eating the food. If your bird is already on pellets, you will be looking for dust and this will either be in the dish itself or on the ground around the dish. As long as you're seeing those signs, it's usually pretty clear that they are picking at their food and eating it. You can also weigh them if your bird is already tamed, and as long as that number isn't going down, then you know that they are in fact eating food. Oh, and one last thing. Parrots are super messy, absolutely incredibly messy. They will eat their produce and flick it everywhere. It will stick to your surfaces. It will be difficult to clean off. Their seed shells will fly halfway across the room. You will find feathers in your pencil case at school somehow. They are super messy creatures. They do require a lot of regular cleaning. I personally am sweeping up their room once a day, once every other day. And then I clean the cages about once a week. And then the veggie corner where the most of the splatter happens gets wiped down at the end of every day. If you don't stay on top of it, it's very easy for these things to build up and become an unmanageable task. So you do need to be pretty consistent and pretty regular with it as best as you can. But just keep in mind that although they are small, they are super messy. So that's gonna do it. I really hope that this gave you a bunch of topics to look into, maybe gave you a more realistic expectation of the sorts of things that go into taking care of a parrot and gave you a ton of ideas of things to research into if you are still feeling like a parrot is the right choice for you. If you are someone who does already own birds and you've decided to watch all the way to the end of this, if there is something that I've missed or you feel like should really be added on here, please leave a comment down in the below. Let's try and make this comment section a nice inclusive place for everyone to learn instead of just telling them not to get one or that it's a bad idea. Let's try and provide them with all of the reasons why a bird might possibly be a bad idea instead of just saying don't. So that's gonna do it for me today. Leave any suggestions that I have forgotten down in the comments and I hope that this has been helpful. But that'll do it. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye! I'm very sorry that I did not have a video last week. By the way, I have been sick for the last two weeks. This is the third week we're going on now. Still a little bit sick, but we're coming out of it. So as long as it doesn't come back at me, I will hopefully be back to posting regularly again from this point onwards.